प्रेस इस वक्त विराट स्वामी श्री सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर महाराज उपाल की जाय अनंत कूति वैष्णव की जाय नामाचार्य श्री हरिराज ठाकुर की जाय इस काम फाउन चार्य श्री भगवान की जाय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतान्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदार हिवास हरि गोर भक्त बिंद की जाय तुलसी देवी की जाय भक्ति देवी की जाय हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की जाय साम वेद भक्त बिंद की जाय निताय गोर प्रेम नंदे हरि गो ग्लोरी हरे कृष्णा All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glories, all glories to the lotus feet of Shri Shri Guru and Guru Angar. Glory to the Pope. No, Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Krishna, I am with you. Shri Mahathir Bhakti, I am with you. I am with you, Krishna Padaya, Pope. Shri Gaur Kavar Shakti Bhakti. नारायण नमस्कृचारोचम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तुजयत नष्टेशु निगवत सेवाय भागवत उतम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टी ओं नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्ण Morning, dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri Rupa. So, we begin today, Bhavatam class. It's Canto One, Chapter Twelve, and Text Three. So, I'll chant that um, three times, and anyone who wants to uh, chant can also repeat after that. Hare Krishna. गादितम श्रोत इच्छा गादी यदि मनसे रूहिनाशदाधनम यम अदचुका गादित श्रोत इच्छा यदि मनसे रूहिना श्रादानम अदचुका तम श्रोत इच्छा गादित यदि मनसे रूहिना श्रादानम यम अदचुका हरे कृष्ण You can chant now as you want. Hare Krishna. Tadidam stotram ichamo gaditum yad gaditum yadi manyase bruhi na sadha dana na yascha jnanam ida chuka. Tadidam stotram ichamo gaditum yadi manyase. श्रद्धानुका श्रोतमिच्छा गदी यदि मनसे 
ब्रूहीन श्रद्धा यश ज्ञान मदाचुक हरे कृष्ण श्रोतमीछा गदि मनसे ब्रूहीन श्रद्धा Yes, yeah, Gyanam Madachuka. Okay. Anyone else? All right, we'll do word for word now. Tat all idam this shlotum to hear each jama all willing gadi tum. to narrate yadi if manya say you think ruhi please speak now we shadada nanam who are very much respectful yasya who's gyanam transcendental knowledge adat delivered shuka shishigadev goswami Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Sri Rupavupar. We all respectfully want to hear about Him, Maharaj Parikshit, to whom Shukadev Goswami imparted transcendental knowledge. Please speak on this matter. Report by Sri Rupavupar. Shukadev Goswami imparted transcendental knowledge to Maharaj Parikshit. During the remaining seven days of his life, and Maharaj Brixi had heard him properly, just like an ardent student. The effect of such a bona fide hearing and chanting of Shrimad Bhagavatam was equally shared by both the hearer and the chanter. Both of them were benefited out of the nine different transcendental means of devotional service to the Lord prescribed in the Bhagavatam. either all of them or some of them or even one of them are equally beneficial if properly discharged maharaj prakshit and shukadev goswami were serious performers of the first two important items namely the process of chanting and the process of hearing and therefore both of them were successful in their laudable attempt transcendental <clears throat> sorry transcendental realization is attained by such serious hearing and chanting and not otherwise there is a type of spiritual master and disciple much advertised in this age of kali it is said that the master injects spiritual force into the disciple by an electric current electrical current generated by the master and the disciple begins to feel the shock he becomes unconscious and the master weeps for his exhaust exhausting his store of so called spiritual assets such bogus advertisement is going on in this age and the poor common man is becoming the victim of such advertisement we do not find such folk tales in the dealings of shivdev goswami and his great disciple maharaj parikshit The sage recited Shrimad Bhagavatam in devotion, and the great king heard him properly. <clears throat> the king did not feel any shock of electrical current from the master, <laughs> nor did he become unconscious while receiving knowledge from the master. One should not, therefore, become a victim of these unauthorized advertisements made by some bogus representative of Vedic knowledge. The sages of Naimi Sharanya were very respectful in hearing about Maharaj Parikshit because of receiving his receiving knowledge from Shukadev Goswami by means of ardent hearing. Ardent hearing from the bona fide master is the only way to receive transcendental knowledge, and there is no need for medical performances or occult mysticism. for miraculous effects the result the process is simple right the process is simple but only the sincere party can achieve the desired result 
Oh my gina to be done this year, Gana Gana Shala Kaya, Chak Shu on Militam Gina, Tas my Sri Guru Vayana Maha. She titanya manovis tam sapitam yena butile, for yam rupa kadama yam the dati swampa that to come. One day hum, Sri Guru, Sri Yuta, for the Kamala, Sri Guru, Vaisna Vams Chow. Sri Rupa Sagaja Tams, Hagana, Raguna Tam, Vitam Tans Jeeva. So I do it tams, I would do tam, Parijana, say tam, Christa Chaitanya Deva. Sri Radha Krishna Pada, Sagana, the Lita, Sri Vishakam, Vitam Scha. E Krishna Krina Sindhu Dina Bandu Jagat Pate, Kope Shagopika Kanta Radha Kanta no Mostate. Dr. Kanchana Gurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Vishabhanu Sute Devi Panamami Hari Priya. Vancha Kapa Trubya Strakripa Sunibya Eva Chapatita Hanam Pavanegu Vaishnavi Bhyo no Monwa. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pavuni Chananda Sri Advaita Gadar Hashiva Shadigora Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Nama Om Vishnu Panaya Krishna Pensaya Bhutane Simati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityamini Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nirvesh Shasuni Vari Pastatya Dizitarani Mo Mahabaranyaya Krishna Prima Padayati Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namni Vati Shay Namaha Ananda Lina Maya Vigrahaya Vimabia Divacha Vishunirai Tasmi Mahaprema Ras Padaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste <clears throat> so the translation of the text again is, we all respectfully want to hear about him, Maharaj Parikshit, to whom Sukadev Goswami imparted transcendental knowledge. Please speak on this matter. Hare Krishna. So the translation, we all respectfully want to hear about Maharaj Pariksit. Maharaj Pariksit performed a very, very important task. He put his life literally on the line. And we say he put his life on the line because when he was cursed by Shringi, Shri Prabhupada already explained, he could have overturned the curse. He didn't have to go on with it. He had a whole kingdom and so much realization from it, even just the decision hmm, to stop the material affairs and devote his life fully, and I might add successfully, hmm, to Krishna consciousness by going to the banks of the Ganga and meditating there, the way to for his Shiksha Guru, Chukadeva Goswami, to come, and many other renowned saints and sages also came, even from, from different planets, they came to hear him. So he performed a wonderful process here, the process of hearing, which actually we're doing now. And it's great for all of us to hear the text from Shunga Bhavatam translated by His Divine Grace Shri Prabhupada, as well as his purports, which give so much spiritual advice. And of course, from the spiritual, the material can be handled properly. When we take care of our spiritual needs, the material needs are actually taken care of. We are guided, literally, to take care of the material. We cannot live material life properly, well, without spiritual life. That, that is actually, it works like that. It's from the spiritual, you get the material. People try to do just their material. And sometimes the Buddhists also tend to categorize. I, I have my spiritual and I have my material things that I have to do. But when we surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, hmm, who is actually the owner of both spiritual and material, he says, everything emanates from me. So if you go to him, 
You know, some people say you want Lakshmi. Sure, you can get Lakshmi if you're going to use it for Krishna consciousness, though. Then Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, who is the wife of Krishna, <laughs> will give you, it, everything will come hmm? according to what your needs are, according to your desire to serve. Hmm? So sometimes we make life difficult for ourselves. And I'm speaking to myself too in this matter. But we have to remember how things are set up. Hmm? Krishna has set it up that when we surrender, the Papa says, one question that was asked of him, um, Sri Papa, what is the, the just summarize the, the means for really achieving Krishna consciousness and being successful? And happy. Shri Papa says, You rascal, just surrender to Krishna. <laughs> he put the word rascal there because he's not insulting. We tend to want to do things outside of Krishna. And that's what gives us problems over and over and over. Our problems come from not trusting enough, not having enough faith in Krishna. Maybe this preaching is more to me than to you. I have enough faith in Krishna to say, in all circumstances, Krishna has it under control. Hmm? So, see, the sages wanted to hear now about Maharaj prediction. And it's been said here in, in the um, purport. So, Prabhupada uses one word over and over and over again. I mean, these two, three times. Hmm? Sukadev Goswami imparted transcendental knowledge to Maharaj Brikshit during the remaining seven days of his life. And Maharaj Brikshit heard him properly, heard him properly, just like an ardent student. Mm -hmm. And so this word ardent is used a number of times through the purport. So what does ardent mean? Well, the dictionary definition of ardent is Passionate, avid, zealous, fervent. That means you want to hear, but there should be some greed there to hear. There should be some, you, that, that, I just have to hear. No, there should be that conviction that this hearing is for my benefit. It is one of the best things to do in my life, and therefore I want to hear. Hmm? And that you should reserve for spiritual topics only. Because material ones are necessary to keep our lives going. Yes, some parts of it are necessary. Good advice is there. But the best advice comes from a Srimad Bhavatam. And so hearing that and hearing that very, very, very passionately, in a determined way. Hmm? Arden student is a determined student. So... Sri Papa says, there is benefit for the person who is hearing and the person who is speaking, chanting. The effect of such a bona fide hearing and chanting of Sri Bhavatam was equally shared by the hearer and the chanter. So Sri Goswami benefited from it. Maharaj Bhikshit benefited by hearing. And he definitely was an ardent student because he wouldn't even eat. He wouldn't even drink any. It was seven straight days to hear the Shema Bhavatam. How important that is. So both of them were benefited. And so underneath this is a message to us that if we hear and if we hear attentively and passionately, being convinced that everything that comes from Shema Bhavatam is good for us, spiritually and materially even, because it's the spiritual things, as we said earlier, when that's in focus, the material thing just follows. If we're convinced about that and we hear, then the benefit will come. And as a matter of fact, we begin to be happier in life. We hear like that. So, Jehovah says, out of the nine transcendental means of devotional service to the Lord prescribed in the Bhavatam, as uh, Pranat Maharaj explained, the seventh canto, the hearing, the chanting, the offering obeisances, remembering, worshiping the deity, praying, becoming Krishna's friend, becoming Krishna's servant, and Atmanivedanam, surrendering all to Krishna. Mm -hmm. 
He says either all of them or some of them or even one of them are equally beneficial if properly discharged. Now, so there are times in different places we see the power part brings this matter up and also adds some things to it that are important. One is in this Kali Yuga, it already has been said that even one of them are equally beneficial if properly discharged. Maharaj Parikshit was an ardent student. He heard and his life became successful from hearing. Shabapa says, and this is Richard Master's mercy, through this particular age where our hearing is not so great, our chanting is not so attentive, we're struggling with it, trying to maintain it, and the rest of it, which have been described, we talked about the other seven processes, we don't do it so well. Hmm? So it's best to try to do as many of them as possible to get more spiritual credits. That's one point. The second point is the Yuga Dham is a chanting of a holy name. So whatever we do in the Vodhana service, we should also chant. We should also chant. Srila Prabhupada has already given us a break from the process of chanting in terms of the number of rounds of japa. A devotee is supposed to chant, a Vaishnava is supposed to chant 64 rounds. Sri Prabhupada says, all right, so 64, cut it down to 32. Devotees still complained that they were not able to keep up. He says 16 rounds, but then he said minimum. 16 rounds minimum. There was, and I've heard this twice in the last, I fact, yesterday, my song was preaching, and this matter was brought up again. That devotee was telling Sri Prabhupada, yes, Sri Prabhupada, I will chant 16 rounds. You asked us to chant 16 rounds. He said, I did. I said 16 rounds minimum. So the minimum is also goes with it. It's not just the devotee is supposed to chant a minimum of 16 rounds. So on a bad day, you can chant 16 rounds then. <laughs> in a bad day. Maybe some things happened and then, you know, it's got to the point where your rounds have been pushed a little further than normally the time you complete them and you determine you got to finish it before you go to sleep. Yeah, do 16 rounds then. Mm. But the 16 rounds is minimum. So after you've done, if you want to chance 16 rounds on your, your Japa bees, that's all right. Mm. That's what most of us do. But for most of us, the counter on the side is 20 of them. Mm -hmm. So by the time you finish 16 hours, you see four of them looking at you. <laughs> That's not done. Then you remember, if you remember, see Papa says 16 rounds minimum. So then go a little further and do this. You obey spiritual master by chanting 16 rounds minimum. You get the 16 rounds, you have obeyed your power part, 16 rounds, but then you add minimum to it. So the chanting is actually important, mm -hmm. along with all the other services. Don't stop chanting. Although it's said here that even one of them are equally beneficial if heard properly. Yes, Prahlad Maharaj remembered mm -hmm. Krishna when his father, Hiranyakashipu, was trying to kill him, remembering, focusing on the Lord. Akura's prayers, again, in praying, he was successful. And Maharaj Pariksha, of course, by hearing. So we do that, whatever we do, we have to add chanting to it. So Sri Papa says, Maharaj Pariksha and Chikade Goswami were serious performers of the first two important items, namely process of chanting and process of hearing. So both of them were successful mm, in the laudable attempt, in the praiseworthy attempt. So hearing and chanting are very important, but we should do the other services too, as many as we can add to the hearing and chanting. Transcendental realization is attained by such serious hearing and chanting and not otherwise. So we really have to be very ardent, very passionate about wanting to hear, very passionate about wanting to chant. Hmm? And then Sri Prabhupada talks about this uh, spiritual master and disciple 
in the age of Kali or something is going around that when the spiritual master injects a spiritual force into the disciple, uh, it's to an electric current and on and on and on and on, it becomes unconscious, the master weeps for his disciple and, and the master weeps for also exhausting his store of so-called spiritual assets. The whole thing is being looked at in a material way. Hmm? Spiritualists never like that. That when a spiritual master hmm, preaches to the disciple, he injects a spiritual force, therefore then some things are lost from the disciple because it's been transferred. Hmm? And therefore, the spiritual master now is short hmm, in a material way. You have 11 and you take around three, then you get eight left. Hmm? So it, it, now you have less. Sri Papa says, spiritual, 11 minus 3 is still 11. Hmm? 1 plus 1 is 1. Krishna is 4. As the Sri Upanishad says, hmm? Krishna is a complete whole. And the others that he has put together, we, living entities, are also complete wholes. His expansion to others, to even the Vishnu forms, or even non-Vishnu forms, never makes him become less. Like this, uh, what's being talked about here, bogus advertisement in this age, you know, about speaker and, and, and the hearer. Um, that doesn't happen. But interestingly enough, personally, the first time I heard something similar to this was in Christianity. Of all places. And I discarded it. I wasn't even a devotee at the time. That idea was just so funny to me. So whoever would write something like this? Mm -hmm. This author was writing Holy Bible for children. For children. And he said that Jesus performed some miracles. And after he performed every miracle, it took so much from him that he got very tired. I said, I have never seen anything like that anywhere in the Bible. But then they wrote something like that. So this is the first time I heard this. Now Sri Prabhupada is talking about spiritual master and disciple, and the spiritual master gives something to the disciple, and then the spiritual master becomes short, and he's crying. That, oof, please, <laughs> give me a break. All right, so it's not like that. Mm -hmm. So at that time, even the Lord gave me the intelligence to realize that this whole thing about Jesus performing a miracle and becoming weak because he performed a miracle, that I was gibberish, and it still is. Hmm? Sri Papa says, the sages in Naim Sharanya, hmm? they're very respectful in hearing about Maharaj Pariksit because of his receiving the knowledge from Shukri Goswami by means of ardent hearing. Hmm? Shukri Goswami has really, really helped the entire world and Sri Papa translating mm -hmm. Bhavatam and giving purports even adds more to it. Shukadeva Goswami is, in fact, in the spiritual world, the pet parrot, the pet parrot of Shimati Narayani. And so, if you permit me, I'll just take a short, maybe a few minutes to talk about uh, Shukha and how Shukha became Shukadeva Goswami. It's a nice pastime. So, Shukha was actually with his mistress. It starts off like that, Radharani. And Radharani was feeding nuts to him. And every time he gave her a nut, she would say, Hare Krishna. And parrots are used to not only repeating, but they try to imitate the sound range of the person that's speaking. So Shuka was saying Hare Krishna with a voice very similar to Radharani's voice. So this went on for a while. Shuka later on, fast forward, flew to where Krishna was. Krishna was not with Radha at the time. And when he got close to where Krishna was, he perched, he stopped, and started chanting Hare Krishna with the same similar voice to Shimati Radharani. And that got Krishna's attention. Hmm? Oh, she's Shuka chanting with Radharani's voice. And of course, you know, Krishna... And rather, we remember each other. They are literally you know, um, emotionally involved the whole time, whether they're together or whether they're not together. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to the situation where um, 
Krishna, Radha and Krishna told Sukha that they would be going back hmm, to Goloka Vrindavan, but they wanted Sukadeva Goswami to stay. Sri Goswami actually, I mean, Sukha, Sukha the parrot. Sukha wanted to go with them, but they asked him to stay. Hmm? And also hear Bhavata. And so Sukha flew to a place where Lord Shiva was at, Kalas. And Lord Shiva was uh, reciting Bhavatam to his wife. His wife was sitting on his lap, Bhavati, and his wife was relishing Bhavatam as the husband, her husband, Lord Shiva, was saying it. So Shiva flew to a tree near them, and Lord Shiva was speaking first canto, it was the second canto, it was the third canto. And of course, Parvati has her back, she's sitting on her lap, back to Shiva. Mm-hmm. And Parvati nodded off. Mm-hmm. Started kind of a little bit, started sleeping. Lord Shiva was going on and on and on and, you know, speaking Bhavatam. And before, one thing as she said, before, Parvati went to sleep. When uh, Lord Shiva says something, then, you know, Parvati responds, yes, yes, very nice. Yes, yes, very nice. And then Lord Shiva is going on and on and on and on. So when Parvati started taking a nap, sleeping, and she's lying, her head was already on Lord Shiva's chest, Lord Shiva continued. And Luka realized that Parvati was sleeping, but he wanted to continue hearing. And so when he got to a point where, you know, Lord Shiva would just get some feedback from Parvati. This time it wasn't Parvati, it was the bird. He was saying, yes, yes, very nice. In the same tone as Parvati's voice. Yes, yes, very nice. Yes, yes, very nice. And so he got to a point where he almost at the third part of the tenth canto in Shema Bhavatam, Lord Shiva went that far. Then Parvati woke up. He says, my Lord, I'm sorry. I did not hear a good part of it. He says, but where did you hear? He says, up to this point, he described it, which is uh, 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 around the third canto. And so could you go back and repeat? And repeat? Lord Shiva said, but I kept hearing yes, yes. You were saying very yes, yes, very nice. He said, "No, I wasn't." So then, when she was starts looking around, sees this bird in the tree, shuka's on the tree, and well, she was immediately put two and two together. So it is shuka that's been saying this bird. So then, here, Lord Shiva took exception to it because he was preaching Bhavatam to his wife, and now this bird has deceived me by making me go on. When in fact my wife hadn't heard most of what I talked about, so well, Shiva gets upset because he's easily you know roused up like that. He took his trident and Sukha flew away, and Lord Shiva gave chase, and he flew all the way. Lord Shiva just chased and chased and chased, and chased until he got to the place where yesterday hmm, his this ashram. And Shiga was just looking for a place to hide. So he got in the ashram, and uh, Vyasadeva was also talking about them to his wife. Shuka immediately made himself small, went into to the mouth of his wife, of uh, Vyasadeva's wife. But Vyasadeva saw it. <laughs> and he went and he disappeared. And not long after, just seconds, here's Lord Shiva. Came, the both, both of them were there. Mm-hmm. And there is no shuka. Both of them means Vyasadeva and his wife. And so he asked Vyasadeva, um, did you see a bird come through here? Vyasadeva was not going to say no. But he asked, why are you coming after this bird? So Lord Shiva explained what had happened and how the bird shuka had deceived him. And so then one question got put to Lord Shiva. Vyasadeva said, but when somebody hears Bhavatam, doesn't that living entity get purified nicely? 
Lord Shiva said, yes. He said, well, why are you chasing after Shuka then? <laughs> you know, you've helped, basically you helped Shuka. So Lord Shiva turned around and left. And Vyasadeva continued teaching Bhavatam. So now Shuka could hear the Bhavatam from who became his mother. They, they, they went through to now to the pl- point where he stayed and heard the whole Bhavatam from Vyasadeva. Hmm? The entire thing is finished by Vyasadeva. And then, of course, when he realized the rest of it is, you know, he, he didn't really want to even come out at all. But when he heard the futility of material life, he stayed in his mother's womb a good 16 years. And then he got born. He was already 16 years by then. Got born. And then um, he began to leave home immediately. And he was headed towards where Maharaj Prakshit was. Mm-hmm. And the story goes on that um, Vyasadev didn't really want his son to leave. So, so um, Shuka, Shukadev Goswami now mm-hmm. came as a person. Shukadev Goswami made a double mm-hmm. and had the double go home with the father. And then he himself continued to Maharaj Prakshit. So this is part of the story about how Maharaj uh, Prakshit um, was benefited wonderfully by Shukadev Goswami coming to preach. So hearing is extremely important for all of us. Hmm? Ardent hearing, the effects of ardent hearing, very, very, very sincere and passionate hearing. In the Shema Bhavatam, Canto 1, in the creation section, the introduction section, it talks about, and this is also in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya meeting Ramana Narai. Hmm? Ramananda Rai, who's uh, actually Vishaka in the spiritual world. So Lord Chaitanya met Ramananda Rai on the bank of the Godavari. And Lord Chaitanya asked some questions to Ramananda Rai, the highest in devotion, the highest level of devotion. Ramananda Rai first said that following the principles of an ashram dam, the four castes and the four orders of human life, that everybody could realize transcendence. Well, the Lord's opinion was Vanashan Dam is superficial. It has very little to do with the highest realization of values. So it's based more or less on ethical principles, moral principles. There is realization, but there's little realization compared to me. So then the Lord asked him to go on and go to a higher because he wanted the highest. Ramananda Rai suggested that renouncing the fruit of actions, giving it to the Lord is also, it's, it's higher still. Hmm? It's higher still. Because in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, which is Transcendental Knowledge, text 27 says, Yat Karosi, Yat Asnasi, Yat Jehoshi Dayasi, Yat, Yat Tapasyasi Konteya, Tat Guru Svabhman Apanam. That everything you do, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you give, and whatever you perform in penance, do all of that to me alone. So that the person has submitted in everything, give it to Krishna. Well, it's a step higher, the law said. It's a step higher than the impersonal conception of an ashram. But still, the relationship no, it's not as distinct, the Lord's argument. All right. Well, Ramananda I said, then we should renounce Vanasham Dharma and accept the devotional service. Well, that's good. But the Lord said it wasn't enough. Hmm? Because to people to just all of a sudden renounce it, some people may do that, all of a sudden renounce Vanasham Dham. They may not get into devotional service with the right consciousness. Mm-hmm. So the desired results may not come. Then Ramarana Raya said, well, attainment of spiritual realization to free person from material concept of life is the topmost achievement. The Lord said, well, some people have used it mm-hmm. the same idea and people have kind of bought into it 
And sometimes these unscrupulous persons have taken advantage of people who have bought into it like that. Therefore, it's a good idea, but it's used by bad people also to have people just follow them, make disciples, make followers that way. So then Namrana Rai suggested that sincere association of self-reliant souls hmm, and hearing submissively the transcendental message of the pastimes or the personality of Godhead is higher still. Now, that was the first time Lord Chaitanya began to accept. That suggestion was welcomed by the Lord. In the end, it came to devotion service and and uh, the Radharani, Ramarana Raya actually accepting the Radharani, the mother of devotion. That's the highest situation in connection of Radha and Krishna. But the first time that Lord Chaitanya accepted what Ramarana Raya suggested was when Ramarana Raya said that the sincere association, Sadhu Sangha of self realized souls, and hearing the transcendental message, mm -hmm. that is higher still. So one has to be very meek and submissive and try to live peacefully by hearing the speeches of a transcendentally self realized souls who speak on the message of Bhagavad Dharma mm -hmm. or glorifying the Lord and his devotees. So perfection of life is attained by glorifying the Lord in association with the self realized body of the Lord. It comes back to hearing what Maharaj Pariksit and Sukadeva Goswami were doing. Hmm? Shri Prabhupada says in that introduction side again, that peace and friendship are impossible for a society which is detached from the association of God and his devotees. As soon as we detach from Krishna, we're lost. Sri Papa says there is only two situations, light and darkness. When there's light, there's no darkness. When there's darkness and light comes on, the light defeats the darkness. Light is Krishna consciousness and darkness is Maya. Therefore, if we get away from Krishna consciousness, then automatically we get put in Maya. So it is very, very necessary for one to sincerely seek the association of pure devotees and hear them patiently and submissively from any position of life. It doesn't matter our position. It doesn't matter at all. Hmm? Hearing and seeking the association of pure devotees. As a matter of fact, when we hear, my Guma explained to me, it's not just what's being said, but there is a connection between the hearer and the person that's speaking. So if you hear Srila Prabhupada's lecture, you connect with Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. You may hear what is important for life spiritually, but you also connect with Srila Prabhupada, mm -hmm. literally with a soul connection, like that. A spiritual connection also takes place. That part is not known so well, but it is in fact, sometimes when you, when you just hear a person that's pure speak, it has an effect on you. You've heard it, but it literally affects how you even go about your day after you hear that. That's why it's so important to hear Bhagavatam in the morning and you chant in the morning because then it makes your day go smoothly. Why? Because you've connected with Krishna consciousness what is important for the soul. And all your consciousness comes from the soul. See, Papa says consciousness is a symptom of the soul. So if the soul is satisfied, why wouldn't the consciousness be well then? It would be better, and therefore our day goes quite well. Which means you hear in the morning, you chant in the morning, you chant earlier, you hear, and your day that goes based on Krishna, how Krishna wants to have things happen or unfold in your life. And Krishna takes charge of life. Hmm? The super soul takes charge of life like that. So, sincere listener. Sri Papa says in Shema Bhavatam, purport of Canto 1, Chapter 1, Text 3, that a sincere listener that hears submissively can at once relish the transcendental tastes. Mm -hmm. And they are very distinct from the perverted taste of the material world. You hear, you will in fact relish that. But sometimes we hear, and it's like, uh, <laughs> 
it's like a little struggle hmm? sometimes. Sometimes you say, oh, well, it's the speaker that's speaking a certain way, and that's why I'm not here in public. Well, we give ourselves excuses because what is actually being talked about, if it is directly from the Shastra and the person is not making it up, and the person is not putting all kinds of uh, speculation in it, then it is pure in itself. So we can hear. So what if the listener is not relishing any transcendental taste from the hearing process? Then we have to check the following. Are we having doubts hmm, about Krishna consciousness? That is, what is our level of faith in Krishna consciousness? Level of faith in Krishna. Krishna is absolute. Krishna consciousness is Krishna. Sometimes we get put in a different situation that we're challenged mentally. Maybe we go to depression. Hmm, and that may affect us a little bit. But whatever situation we go through, we have to remember Krishna is in control. What are the lessons to be learned from it? Sometimes the lessons don't come right away, but as long as you're looking for the lessons that come, that are associated with any challenges, you will come. Krishna will actually open up and let you know. So if we're not hearing and relishing, are we having bad habits, maya, that we've indulged ourselves in again? Sometimes you know that, that happens, and then it affects our hearing because Krishna says, the extent to which you surrender, he works accordingly. Don't get around that. He's very serious about it. So sometimes the symptom of our spiritual sickness hmm, is that the bad habits have come in. Because Krishna, Maya is always knocking and trying to hmm, get us to do things, tempting us. Tempting us. But we have to be very, very, very vigilant. And that's why she's about to see that that's why the taco Maharaj says that we've heard from, I'm sure some of you heard many times that in the morning, hmm, you beat the mind with a shoe and in the evening, beat the mind with a broomstick. And uh, His Holiness Gugumina Maharaj says, that means in the morning you chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. To pull the mind away from material things of Buddhist Maya and take us to Krishna consciousness, which is our rightful place. So sometimes bad habits can cause that. Sometimes the japa not attended, chanted, you know, attentively, we cause the transcendental taste not to be relished. Or sometimes the service that we're doing, and it's for one reason or another, we've interrupted it. But service is supposed to be a high tiki and a patiata. We cannot, it has to be continuous. Or sometimes we get a little lazy, or worse, go back, going back to watch mundane TV programs. You abandoned it earlier, and now you're feeling so good about the transcendental aspects of things, but somehow you that in Maya through the door and now mundane TV programs too, which are always in our faces, uh-huh, gotten into it. Or we got into a non-devotee association and we're justifying it, justifying or accepting it. That this person, well, sometimes we have to work with non-devotees, but you got to be always hmm, attentive to the fact that Lord Chaitanya is given the definition that a Vaishnav is the one who does not associate with non Vaishnavs. A Vaishnav always wants to hear about Krishna consciousness. You cannot get that from non devotees. So we have to be very, very, very careful not to put ourselves in a situation where now we're not hearing so well. Mm-hmm. So, Bhavatam. Canto 1, chapter 1, text 13, Sri Prabhupada again talks about the conditions for proper hearing. The first condition for hearing the absolute truth is that the audience must be very sincere and eager to hear. So there should be the eagerness to hear. Mm-hmm. And of course, the speaker should be in the line of discipline succession. If we go through Sri Prabhupada, we're fine. Right? We don't have to worry too much about that. Hmm? So, I recognize the charger is divine grace Sri Prabhupada. The speaker should be either him, who recorded a message, or those who have learned hmm, and living transcendental life 
through the teachings of Sri Prabhupada. But we have to be very sincere and eager to hear about that. And that's all. Hmm? And if you don't hear, you really can't make much progress. Sri Prabhupada describes it in Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text 12 in the purport. You can't make much progress without hearing. Mm -hmm. The words and service without hearing, and you're not convinced, then the words and service becomes, it doesn't become that worthy. It's not worthwhile. So the hearing gives the conviction. And from the conviction, then you're serving because you know and you understand why you're hearing, why you're serving. It's from what you've learned. So another result is from, uh, for hearing properly, is you get detached from worldly affairs. Mm -hmm. And for that, Narada Muni, when he was little, when he was five years old, he heard from the sages that came in the Chaturmasya and the mother served him wonderfully. And he was around. And what happened? When the news of the death of his mother came, he had heard so well. And he, the mother was the only caretaker. Still, because he had heard so well, Nada took it as a blessing of God, and he immediately took the opportunity to search out the Lord. That had to come from hearing. And that's all he did. He heard. He heard from the sages. And then God, you took Mahapashadam too, which always helps. <laughs> Mahapashadam. And then he hearing. And there you are. So it's not a difficult thing, but if we're not getting the taste, then we really have to look at a few things. Hmm? Well, faith level, uh, mind level, our depression, and sometimes it may be bad habits. The way we chant our japa, maybe it's not so great. Hmm? Or we're not continuing with our devotion service in, in a nice, steady way. Or sometimes we get a little lazy or, you know, then the other things come in, mundane TV programs or the body association. The uh, non devotee association, and we justify a non devotee association. All of those things can help, uh, can put us in, in, in the danger of um, not really getting the taste mm, from hearing. So, Maharaj Brexit has taught us a lot about how to hear steadily. And he did the extreme one, heard seven days without eating, without drinking, without sleeping. And we hear a few hours. That would be very, very helpful to us, not even at the level of my aspiration. But one thing that we should get to his level is we need to hear ardently. We need to hear very, very passionately. That will help us in the growth of our life. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much, Prabhu. That was absolutely uh, inspiring. And, and, um, I, I, I have a small request then of everybody in the audience. Um, mm -hmm. Please raise your uh, electronic hand if you, uh, if you have accepted what Parikshit Prabhu has said here today. And uh, if you think <laughs> that we should listen to, uh, I have two hands raised, uh, three. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you think we should... Um, really listen to uh, Srila Prabhupada, listen to, listen ardently. If we do, then we need to show him our gratitude. And this has been the um, mood for the past, past two shlokas, at least, you know, the chapter has just started. It is mm -hmm. about listening, listening like Parikshit. Uh, we need four more hands, five more hands to go up. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, Parikshit Prabhu will have to work harder at convincing us. I have to work harder anyway. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what I, um, come up. I see four hands. So that's... Yeah, well, I did not raise my hand. That's probably one. Oh, okay. Well, hey. Yeah. So if we want to show him our gratitude, Vishnu Gada Prabhu had said that you know, we should uh, make an offering to Srila Prabhupada on his Vyas Puja. That's the way to let him know that ah. we do take this seriously. And, mm -hmm. and Vishnu Gada Prabhu has been asking us, and I don't know if uh, many of us have yet uh, offered an offering that can be printed and um, offered to Prabhupada on his uh, Vyas Puja day. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be elaborate, just a heartfelt thank you um, 
it is amazing how much he has given us. You know, sometimes I think I, I don't realize what it is we have been given. Mm. And so uh, let us all please uh, make it, you know, it, because of this technology we have, it is very easy. It's just a matter of typing it on the computer and hitting the send button. Um, mm -hmm. And that's all it takes. If you want to know who to send it to, please, uh, you know, uh, uh, the easiest thing would be to send it to Vishnu Gada Prabhu directly so that there is no um, transference. And uh, I put his email address here. Um, I think it is... Is it Vajra 8? <laughs> mm. I think it is this. I think it is. Um, so. Um, Vajra AOL. AOL. Yeah. So, and otherwise, I, I mean, I will be on every day of the week um, and I can give it to you. Just uh, please, please uh, let us take this message seriously. I, I'm, you know, it, of course, it is Vyasadev writing this Bhagavatam. I think, you know, the way Acharya Prabhu gave the class yesterday and, and Srila Prabhupada's purport, uh, you know, they got a little sidetracked. The, the question started with, please tell us, you know, what happened to Parikshit and how this whole thing got started. But then they went off into Kunti Devi's prayers and Bhishma Dev's prayers and mm. Krishna entering and exiting Hastinapur and entering Dwaraka and all that. Uh, but uh, we are again being told that we need to listen here, 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 not listen here. And so because I think we need that reminder. Mm -hmm. And um, so there is, you know, it's not just giving us the actual education, but also reminding us why we need the education, how to get the education and, and the practicalities of it, right? How, it, how to actually do what we are supposed to do. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, I don't know if, if, if we could even show our gratitude in full to Srila Prabhupada for what he has given us, but let us, let Good us try to mention, yeah. yes. Yeah. So thank you very much, <laughs> Prabhu. Your class today was absolutely, uh, got us riled up in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna's mercy, Guru's mercy. Thank you very much. For hearing, because when we speak, we, we don't speak on our own. Yeah. We just pray to the master, the spiritual masters to speak through us. So then I'm speaking, but I'm also even hearing at the same time. Because the mercy comes from the front for us. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, any questions? Final questions? Yeah, today's class, Prabhu, it was very good. And the way you were telling about Sukhdev Goswami, how he was... It was coming, you know, like as a bird. Mm. And he was listening from uh, Radha Krishna and then from Shiva Parvati yeah. and then finally Vyasadeva. Mm. So from that nectar, we are getting at least, you know, a drop we are getting from here now. Mm. So we need to get if that whole thing we hear, how much it will affect. I don't know. Oh, it I is agree. really thank you very much. And then one final announcement tomorrow, Gaurang, uh, His Grace the Gaurang Prabhu is coming to um, Iskon Philadelphia. So please, all of you, join us for that. It's going to be from seven to eight, he's going to be speaking. I hear he's a very, very inspiring, enthusiastic, dynamic speaker. Um, so we will, you know, let's see if he's going to be able to follow Parikshit Prabhu today. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm sure he will do me easily. <laughs> uh, there will be, uh, uh, again, topics that will, or, you know, topics that will encourage us to do what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so it, Aarti will be at 6.30. So please join us for Aarti at 6.30 and then for the class between 7 and 8 tomorrow. Jai. 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 Parikshit Ma heard from Sukadeva Goswami. We hear from Parikshit Prabhu. Parikshit Das. Das. Thank you very much, Prabhu. <laughs>
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna